keto crotch, keto crotch, keto crotch. Hey fruit faces, I just wanted to do a video on this subject of keto crotch. So keto has long been known as kind of a smelly diet to go on. You just kind of stink. Um, you're, you get keto breath when you do keto and then you all, but you also sometimes can have this like ammonia type of a smell. Um, and this all kind of goes in hand with keto, keto acidosis and with just acidosis in general, um, which is not a good state for your, your body to be in. Um, I've got many videos on keto overall in general, what it is, why your body even goes through it kind of help people understand that yes, even though it does help shed unwanted pounds sometimes, a lot of times that's just water weight, a lot of times it doesn't stay off completely unsustainable and not healthy long term, even if it is improving your blood labs. So I just want to talk about this whole smell issue because it's all over the news lately. I think some people are, you know, oh, those crazy vegans are talking smack again, but we as vegans know that when we go vegan, because we most of us have been meat eaters and we compare our health and our smells and just little things you know to when we were vegan and I know that many 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 vegans um, including myself have noticed huge differences in the way that they smell um, I don't even wear deodorant on a regular basis I don't have to worry about it unless I go days and days and days without shower or cleaning myself at all which doesn't happen obviously it's just you notice things like this and you smell way better as a vegan from your head to your toes my teeth are actually better now um, I noticed that my gums don't bleed like everything smells better <laughs> it can really affect the way that you smell and if you think about it you leave meat sitting out in a warm temperature what's it gonna do right away putrefy you know you sit fruits and vegetables out on the counter, what are they gonna do? Still continue to be beautiful and look good and taste good and smell good. And you you know that smelling bad is universal. You guys, there's not like some different tastes and things are cultural. We decide as a culture, you know, hey, we're gonna eat meat. This is what we're gonna like, or this we're gonna eat fruit. And um, those can be passed down, but smell is a universal thing. And when something is putrefying, when something smells bad, it does that as a way to show you that something is wrong, okay? And it's like, hey, this smells bad, don't eat this food. You know, hey, this smells bad, get away from this area, it's gonna kill you. You know, and that's exactly what I see happening here with the keto diet. People immediately will get keto and then they'll say, oh, well, you'll get over it or do this or have this, you know, method. Um, but it's it's a sign. It really is a sign from keto breath to just the general smell to the keto crotch issue. Huge signs that this is not optimal for your body. This is not what your body would prefer to be doing if given the choice. Your body would naturally use carbs to create energy the way it's supposed to. Keto crotch specifically, let's just talk about this. I can tell you from experience that when I was a meat eater and I was a, I was a high protein, aholic type of a person, um, and even towards the end whenever I was slowly going vegetarian, flexitarian, onto vegan, whatever, I was even more like a healthier type of a meat eater. Um, not the healthiest, but I definitely considered myself a notch above the standard American diet. And I still had issues. I had candida. I had IBS symptoms. I had a huge afternoon slump every single day after eating. And I was doing a lot of things, spending a lot of money researching about candida, attempting futile futilously, futilely, like attempting with fail, you know, attempting with fail, failing, but still attempting all these different diets and things that I could cut off the sugar to stop feeding this, these candida microorganisms, right? I tried it all, but um, I just don't do well with calorie restriction. I don't do well um, with eliminating things. That's why, you know, I never thought I would go vegan because Dang it, I love my eggs, I love my yogurt, and now it's like, wow, we have vegan eggs, vegan yogurt, and everything. So it's one of those things where um, I didn't even totally change my diet that much. I was probably vegan, I was probably vegetarian for, let's see, April to December, so over six months, six or eight months, 
um, I was vegetarian and then in the first few months of going vegan I noticed it was all gone so it took you know probably not even a year for me to lose these really bad candida and IBS symptoms and I've done different videos on this before but I think it really ties in I think it really ties in with this issue of keto crotch keto crotch called out a stinky side effect of popular diet meat heavy diets maybe giving you keto crotch so they're saying that this smell that is related to keto crotch is described as overripe to rotten fruity or metallic like fingernail polish remover and this is all over medical message boards this is all over twitter reddit threads everybody's talking about this they're just saying that it's the pH of the body. When this happens, your body will emit certain odors. So the keto diet, they're saying this, this alteration of the smells, you know, where it may be like a bacterial vaginosis or something, um, they're saying that it might just be the change of the pH. And we all know that having a healthy pH is important. I mean, that's important to our health, to our vaginal health. And I just want to share again, share my story with Candida um, because, you know, that's a lot of, like the yeast infection side of it is related to the smell. And I think any time when you're talking about vaginal health, one of the main things they say as far as preventing something like bacterial vaginosis, which is also a, a smelly, like a fish type of smell infection that is very, very common. One of the most important things is keeping your pH level. Semen, body washes, different things like this can all affect our pH, but if your diet is affecting your pH and then you, you know, are going swimming or are using a body wash or have sex or whatever, you know, you're putting yourself at a more likelihood not just to smell bad from this pH issue, but to smell bad and to be actually unhealthy. And you know, you can get a bacterial infection. It can go back and forth between partners, just like a regular STD. It's just not a good look. It's not a good smell. Why would you risk your health and your, you know, your vaginal health and smell for something like this? That's not even proven long-term to be safe, much less healthy. They say the, the body gets used to it and keto crotch goes away, but I'm wondering if that's not just more of one of those situations where you're getting used to it and, you know, overcompensating in, in maybe some other area. But like, why would you want to do something that makes you smell bad? This is obviously a warning sign. And when you eat vegetables and fruits, pineapples, you know, your pee, you know, your cum, your your body oozes out what you are. You are what you eat. So, you know, you definitely want to go vegan rather than go keto. People think it's so hard and you'll be missing everything. Your tastes change in three to 10 days. You start craving more fresh, healthy foods that are actually good for you. You feel better and so you wanna do it and you get to eat a lot. I'm a huge eater. You get to eat all the time. For guys, they can actually, they're saying they can get a dryness down there. Either way for guys or girls, like why, again, why would you want this? Have you guys heard of this? Have you experienced it? Let me know what you think. I did dabbled with paleo, but I never fully went like really low carb. I just kind of played around with the idea. So honestly, I wouldn't really know, but like I said, I do notice that overall, I smell way better. My hair takes longer to get greasy, my face is less greasy, just I feel cleaner as a person inside and out and my digestion, you guys, is freaking amazing. Even as I get closer and closer to raw now, it's like, wow, it even got better than it was. It's amazing, like I love everything about the vegan lifestyle, knowing inside and out that you're helping yourself, but you're also helping other people you know, people whose grain is going to be fed to livestock or people who are working in the slaughterhouses or cleaning the slaughterhouses at night. Migrants, you know, illiterates that can't stick up for themselves when they get hurt, they can't even file workman's comp or the wildlife or the farm animals or my spiritual level. 
environment. It's all connected and to know day in and day out that you are living on purpose. You are doing your best for the world. You are doing one thing and speaking out about one thing that can change so many different things for people. There's literally no better feeling than to know that your values are in alignment with your lifestyle and that you're no longer being a hypocrite. It just makes you feel amazing and it kind of opens up the possibilities to you as a powerful and beautiful divine being. Which again, I think with this whole keto crotch issue, you know, you're not coming into your own and becoming this divine person. You're going backwards and literally backwards in the paleo sense, um, you know, and you're, you're, you're going downward into like a downward spiral. And again, just because you're losing weight doesn't mean it's healthy. You can lose weight from certain medications, certain drugs, stress, cancer, like all of these things doesn't make the weight loss healthy in itself, even though losing that weight is going to help your blood pressure and your blood sugars and things like that, if that makes sense. i um, done lots of videos on this before, so let me know if you have any questions. Take care, don't forget to eat your fruit, and I'll talk to you guys soon.